Hey, good morning, guys. It's Tush coming at you. It's uh, about 20 after 10 on Sunday morning, August 4th. And we're out in the garage again today. Panels are off the car, except for the doors. And there's a reason for that. So I've got the uh, panels stored away as best as I can over on this side. Trying to keep them safe and out from uh, being bashed around. So uh, what we plan on doing today is uh, we plan on taking the body off the uh, chassis and uh, I think what we're going to do is we're going to roll the chassis out into the driveway and we're going to cover it with some tarps and we're going to leave it out there for a few days just to get it out of the way. Um, I may be able to, uh, we'll see how much space I have, but I may be able to move the body over enough to be able to work on it comfortably and to be able to get the chassis on the other side and then I can just pu push the chassis in and out when I need to. Uh, that's assuming that I have enough room to get the TR6 in. So. Uh, It'll be tight, but I, I know I can get three cars in here, but uh, I do have a lot of stuff piled up against that far wall, so that might be a bit of an issue. Anyway, so um, one of the Triumph guys, and I think it was Pit Stop TR3, asked me to take a video the next time I took the body off. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. Um, let me just turn the radio down for a sec. Now, I'm not suggesting that you do it this way, but I can tell you this is how I do it. So. Uh, and do this at your own risk. Like I said, uh, you can see that I've put the doors back on and uh, to be honest with you, I put them back on for this video. I don't really think it's a requirement at this stage to have the doors braced because there is new floors, new sills, everything is brand new in this car and the car is very solid. But for the purpose of this video, um, I did put the doors back on just to help with some of the structural rigidity of the uh, body tub when you lift it. Before, when I was uh, lifting the body tub off fairly often, I'd actually had some bracing that I'd built that I could bolt in using the existing uh, hinge holes and the striker or catch plate holes. Um, but uh, those are put away. It's easier to just to stick the doors on at this point. And uh, what I'm using for pickup points are um, a couple holes here that were actually in the, uh, in the tub when I got it. Um, this car used to be a race car. Um, it used to be a a vintage race car that had a huge roll bar on it. So this had a couple pickup points here for the roll bar. Quite a few of them I welded in already. Um, but I left these two spots because they seem to be convenient for attaching some eye bolts to. And what I've got is just, uh, you know, some, there's a large washer and a bolt, um, sorry, a nut on the inside of this. And then on the other side, for the front pickup points, I've got another set of eye bolts um, or hooks and I've got a large washer just to spread a little bit of the load and a small washer underneath and just the ropes coming to a to a center where I can uh, pick it up with my uh, shop crane so that's the way I'm doing it for this car for my TR6 I did it a little differently I actually built a boom out of wood and ran it the length of the car and I put some adjustable chocks on the other end so I could adjust the body weight and sort of get the balance right on the body tub uh, it was a little bit of overkill uh, it did work well but uh, for this car, um, I've just decided to go with that uh, center hookup uh, point, and it seems to have worked. I have must have had this body on and off probably 100 times. Anyway, uh, we'll do it for one or two last times, and uh, we'll, we'll lift it up. We'll take a video on I've got it up suspended, and then we're just going to pull it over here and uh, probably just lower it down, and then I'm going to bring my bunk in from the backyard, and we'll set it on the bunk uh, towards the center of the garage. So that's it for now, guys. I'll take some video along the way. It's a little scary to watch, but uh, hey, I'm a professional. Hey okay, guys, I'm back. Uh, one thing I should mention is uh, I find it easier to lower the front of the car, particularly if you've got limited reach on your um, engine crane and you've got overhead uh, issues like uh, garage tracks. You can only lift the body so high. So it's easier to uh, put the front end down, I find, if you have it up on jack stands. If not, you can just do it directly from the... Uh, from the ground as long as your uh, crane can get under your frame okay. Now the only thing uh, you have to be concerned about is this is the highest point on the car. This uh, heater uh, control valve or heater water valve is the highest point on your car so you want to make sure that you clear that uh, when you're dragging the body across the uh, across the chassis. You don't want to wipe the top of that off. So anyway so we got this uh, hooked up. Um, just taking a little bit of the slack out and we're getting ready to do the lift off. All right, we'll come back. 
Just a quick tip, as I start going up on the body, um, if you feel some resistance, obviously you want to stop. Generally what I try to do is just take, a, you know, take it slowly, go up a few cranks on the jack or on the, uh, the crane, and then sort of walk around and just shake the car. It tends to hang up a little bit, um, sometimes on the transmission. Um, the lips of the floors tend to hang up on the transmission a little bit. And in some cases, it, like I said, it hangs up in the uh, engine compartment a little bit. So you just got to be careful uh, and, just, like I said, take it slow. All right, we'll continue on. Okay, guys, she's about halfway off. And uh, just a word of warning not to ram your, uh, your crane into the side of the door if you can help it. I haven't done that yet, but... Uh, Anyway, just a quick warning because your uh, shop crane tends to want to walk towards the car when you're cranking on it. So, anyway, uh, I did add a little, uh, this is one of my little helpers, is just add a little weight in the back just to keep the front end up as that's the highest point. So I just have a battery booster in the back here to give it a little bit of weight. All right, we'll continue on. So pretty close to clearing now, guys. Maybe two more pumps on the jack. And you can see we're getting close to the uh, the beams at the top. As I remember I mentioned to you, you got to be careful of your headspace in the garage. So anyway, we're getting there. Uh, I did put a little piece of foam in here just to protect that uh, ram from hitting the uh, door. Anyway, we'll continue on. Okay, so we're clear of the car. And uh, that's about as high as I had to go. And uh, free and clear here. What I'll do is I'll just lower it down temporarily and then we'll get that bunk in from the backyard after I roll the chassis out. Pretty dusty under there. That was clean at one point. Anyway, uh, we'll roll this out and we'll put the body back towards the center of the garage. All right, guys. So after I get it uh, clear of the, uh, the chassis, I try not to let it hang too long. So I just uh, set it down gently and uh, it sits on the legs of the, uh, of the boom shop crane temporarily. Uh, just to take a little bit of weight off the tub. These are, you know, they're not holding any weight. They're just slack now. So it's just sitting there comfortably on the uh, on the sills. Not worried about damaging the sills. The tub's not that heavy. Uh, that's about it. So uh, we'll move that chassis out. Maybe we'll cover that up. Leave it outside for a few days. I think it's supposed to rain tomorrow, though. That's my only concern. But hey, maybe it'll wash it off. Hey guys, coming up on 20 to 12 and she's all set up. I decided not to go with the uh, wooden bunk that I had built for a couple of reasons. Um, the wooden bunk <clears throat> actually was a little bit uh, limiting in some areas. Um, it was hard for me to get down here because the, uh, the wood overhung on the, uh, the bottom of the sills. So I know I'm going to have to paint the bottom of the sills, so I figured I'd go with something a little bit... Uh, uh, still supportive, but a little bit more sparse. So uh, I've got a couple of folding um, sawhorses. This one's uh, sacrificed uh, eight inches of its legs, as you can see. That's supposed to hold 300 pounds, but I have a couple of uh, fail safes in there in case it happens to drop. I had a couple jack stands in the corners. They're not touching, but they're just there to catch it if it does happen to collapse and I got my trusty milk crate uh, with a uh, cushion on it just in case it drops straight down. And in the front, I haven't actually used the, uh, the feet of the uh, sawhorse. I've actually just uh, spread it across a couple jack stands underneath the, uh, the front edges of the floor. So that's pretty solid. Uh, it's about the right height for me to work on. Like I said, I've mainly done that because I really need to, uh, to be able to spray down that low and I also need to mask off the bottom of the car. Uh, not to get any overspray on it. So uh, I think we're set up in pretty good shape. I think I can get the TR6 in beside it. And I think if I move a few of the body panels around, I can probably get the uh, the chassis on the other side to get it in for the night. So that's about it for now. I think I'm going to go have a Diet Coke, relax for a little bit, and then we'll get out here later this afternoon. Okay, guys. Well, I just did a test fit, and uh, it's tight, but I can get out of the car, no problem. Could almost walk between the car. It was a little thinner. And uh, I got the chassis in okay, so uh, we're good to go. So that'll be uh, what I'll do. I'll have to push that uh, chassis out every day when I want to work on the car, but that's doable. And the TR6, I can back in and out, no problem. So we're good to go. All right, time for break.